G'day, how are you all? Hope you're all going well. Now I'm going to be doing some varnishing tonight. I've got some a couple of paintings which are going into a local art exhibition, so they need to be varnished. So I've chosen to varnish with Liquitex Gloss Varnish. As I believe that's a, a good quality one. It's UV protected and yeah, it brings up a nice sheen. So the paintings I'm doing, um, it's this one here. And also this one here. I'll put the dimensions of them underneath this video if you're interested. So I'm going to be doing that in a minute. But first of all, I'm just going to do a little practice on this little one here. Even though this is probably one of my most favourites, so I hope I don't stuff it up. So anyway, I'm going to give this a go. This was a funnel pour I did not long ago. So, yep, I'll move the camera around so that you can see what I'm doing in just a tick. Okay. All right, so I'm going to be varnishing, as I said, this small one first, or smaller one. And if I was just going to be doing this painting, I'm pretty sure that I would choose this size brush. But because I'm going to be doing those extra large paintings, I don't want to end up washing away the Liquitex uh, varnish that's left in the brush, which basically is wasting it. And this is very expensive. In Australia, it's almost $25 for eight fluid ounces, 20, 237 mils. So yeah, that's Australian. Uh, so, so I bought two bottles of it just in case it isn't enough because I have to do at least three or four coats on those big canvases. Uh, hopefully this will, one will be enough, but I don't know. So anyway, I decided that I will just use this big one on this canvas. I'm sure that will be fine. I think it will probably make it easier actually. And yeah, anyway, I just thought I'd explain to you why I'm using the extra large brush. Now, of course, with all this is a new brush, with all new brushes, you've just got to be careful of loose hairs, they always seem to fall out in the beginning. I didn't want to wash it first because you need to use a dry brush. Anyway, I've, I've pulled out a whole heap so far just by gently, gently doing that. It, on it and quite a few came out at first but it seems to be seems to have finished doing that now so hopefully that will all be fine anyway because of course air bubbles are the enemy of varnish don't want to be shaking this bottle around so I've just got a, a popsicle stick here and just give it a gentle stir just because some parts of it may have settled you know like with all paints you need to stir them first because the heavier parts of the fluid will go to the bottom so just just basically going gently around Trying my best not to incorporate any bubbles. Alright, so then I'm going to pour just a little bit in here. You can always put more in later, but it's not a good idea to tip this back. So you might not have been able to see that. Uh, not a good idea to tip this back. If you don't use it all, obviously I'm going to be using all this, but you can always add to it. And yeah, you don't want to tip it back because it could be contaminated. You know, they might, it might pick up bits of paint 
from your painting. I have washed them all earlier today. I did wash them. I haven't used any silicone in it in any of these paintings, but you still need to make sure they're clean. It's amazing how much dust I certainly get in this house with all my dogs. And so yeah any grease like even putting my fingers on the painting if you've ever put your hand on on a window pane you see how much grease gets left behind so every time you're touching your painting you're leaving grease behind so I just use a, a very mild detergent and just wipe it over with a soft cloth and then rinse that a couple of times with a soft cloth and then leave it to dry anyway so I've got a reasonable amount on this paintbrush but I'll just wipe the excess off and I'll just start this side. Now they say not to overwork your painting, but I've seen it's okay to go over it like maybe twice. So I can feel it starting to pull in the middle there. I think it's sort of started to run out of the varnish about there. Now, one thing you've got to be careful of is where your two lines meet. You can end up with a little ridge, which can end up being permanent. If I turn that over, then I can get the varnish from the other side. So while it's still newly down you can go over it just to smooth out that ridge and even though this isn't a very big one at this stage i'm just going to go around the edges because if this has started to dry that I, the stuff i've just done once that starts to dry it goes tacky and then you can ruin your painting basically if you brush goes over what's been done a little while ago actually this wasn't really enough varnish I'll just put some more in my pot mm. hope I don't run out I have to submit my paintings on Sunday or Monday at the latest it's now Thursday I need a good three hours drying time between coats. Just going over that ridge. I may as well just do the edge as I go, I think. And I believe it's best to give it at least a day after you finish varnishing before you start handling it too much. I need to get this done but I wanted to leave it as long as possible because I had touched up a few things on the paintings I'm submitting and so I know you, you, they say to leave it to cure your paint to cure for most people I'm hearing these days are saying three weeks. And some people don't know. See, I'm so tempted to go back now and do something over there. Because it looks like an air bubble. But I've heard how dangerous that is. And I'm not willing to test it out. Surprise, surprise. So you might have noticed actually on this side... I enough newly down to just do that all right so yes you may have noticed I was doing this mainly from this way and a little bit that way apparently the worst thing you can be doing is going jump, 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 that that can pick up your paint it can make the varnish go milky yeah it's best to not fiddle with it too much at all 
and also you've got to be quick about it because it does dry fairly quickly it will start drying but yeah now I need to leave it for three hours then I'll come back and do the opposite direction and then after that I'll start from this side for my next coat and go that way and then the opposite way going this way so that will be four coats just got to remember which I've done first I guess if I have a plan and I always use it like left to right to start and then say down to up if I always do that left to right down to up then I know what I'm going to be doing for the second and then third and fourth coat I normally do my painting in the on the kitchen the kitchen sorry hide when I'm thinking and talking at the same time about something different <laughs> uh, I do my painting on the kitchen island bench which is, overlooks the family room where all the dogs are and but it's sort of up high yeah anyway, but I, yeah after washing the canvases today I didn't want them getting dust and it's amazing how much dust the dogs make so I put them in this room and shut the door all right Whew, here goes this is the important one all right so hopefully it's not too loaded go over it a little bit Halfway, I'll turn the brush around and go back a bit. And I can see it's running out. So I think I'll start from down here actually. Down there. Oh wow, look, I think surely it's not setting that fast. It really crawled when I went back. I think I'll do that pitch right now. cold on the outside temperature is cold here I've got the fire going but it's only been going this evening it's not hot in this room so it shouldn't that shouldn't be making it dry fast as in the high temperature it's winter here in Western Australia well all of Australia really actually no not all of Australia up north you have the the wet and the dry a tropical climate. It's down here, it's more temperate. I should think it starts off quite thick on the brush. Whereas by the time I get to here, it's Drying out. Oh, that felt nice. I'm going to try and keep it in so I can see the light glistening on it so I can tell where I'm up to. Just getting some more varnish in the container. Alright. So I'm just gonna start that there because it's there. It's quite thick. Come up, take your time over this. Well, it's tricky getting the right amount. Still can feel it. Pulling that last bit. But with the first coat, really, if, if you miss a bit, it doesn't matter. You're going to be doing more coats. It will get done. 
Right, so I'm starting back a bit because the first bit seems to just leave a whole lot of it at the top edge there. I'm going back over it a little bit. because You don't want to be left with ridges. Because where the edge of your brush is, it tends to accumulate the varnish. Um, yeah, the sides of your brush, the varnish ends up being a bit thicker. I don't know if you can see that here, but that's why you need to just quickly go back over that join again before it's had a chance to dry. So now I'm just incorporating that join. It's quite fun actually. It's a little bit stressful because I don't want this to stuff up because I've entered it into the art exhibition and you can't change your entry at this stage. Stressful but fun at the same time. All right, so woohoo! First coat of that one done. You know, I can see there where it looks different to there and there, as in it's not as shiny. And if I hadn't watched all these videos saying don't go back, it would be so tempting to go back and just do that again. But I'm going to be strong and not going to do that. Right, this will probably get sped up, I expect. Gee, I tell you what, it's brought up the colours beautifully. It's gone back to looking like it did soon after it was painted. You know when the paints are beautiful and bright and then it dries and goes all dull. But hey, yeah, colours are just looking gorgeous in all of the paintings I've just varnished. So very happy. That's for sure. Now I've been told that yeah, look, I can see brush strokes in it now, but apparently the, the more coats you do, the more they'll disappear. Yeah. Anyway, I'll talk to you again in a bit. All right, so it's now the next evening. Could you see that? Sorry. That's still good. It's still nice and liquidy, so that's great. Lasted nearly 24 hours. Well... Right, but getting there. Do you know what? I'll just open the lid here and pour it out rather than through the little spout because that could cause bubbles if I do it through that little hole. No, you don't want bubbles. So, just I guess I'm going to need a fair bit after realizing how much I used before. And I ended up putting the brush in plastic. I thought, well, it's only going to be till tomorrow. So I put it into two layers of bags just to... didn't want to have to waste the 
the varnish that was already in the brush basically so I thought it was worth trying and I was pretty confident it would work and it's feeling nice and supple still so that's good Fine. All right, so decided I can't really twist it around because it'll be too far away for me to reach the top. So I'll just do it like this. All right, this is a clean, low fiber tea towel. I don't want to catch any fibers in it. We'll wipe over for any dust that's landed in it over night and day. All right then, so here we go. had their second coat of varnish and I'm just coming up to do their third coat. I'm just, I changed my top because uh, we've had a bit of a thunderstorm and a couple of my dogs get a bit scared and one in particular insists on snuggling into me on the sofa. I, I tell her it's alright, it's fine, but anyway, she needs comforting. But anyway, I've got dog hair all over me, so I tried to take it all off with this, but of course it, you can never get it all off. So then I changed it to this one. This is clean out of a, you know, just been washed, but it's still covered in dog hair. Anyway, that's what happens when you live with a whole heap of dogs, especially Labradors, as they do lose a lot of hair. Anyway, so just explaining to make sure you don't have any things which are likely to fall off into your paint as you or into your varnish as you're varnishing. So I'm just going to do what I did before and just just very very lightly do that to make sure that there's no dust or dog hair that might have fallen onto them. Or at least if there is it's gone now. Right, so I'm going to get back into it and yeah, I'll put this on fast forward again for you. All right, catch you soon.
can test if your plastic bag is airtight, air hasn't got any holes. Just hold it open and then scritch up the top. Hold it tight and go like that. You can tell that that's good and airtight, so it's safe to put my paintbrush in there. Like if there was a hole, it could let well it would let the air in and then the paintbrush would dry out before the next wanted to use it. I wouldn't do this long term, but certainly if you can be using it the next few hours or the next day through the next day or two, that should keep it fine. Um, I'd actually put another something over the top of that again. Yeah. Well that was the fourth coat. I think this painting's going to be fine. But I'm not sure about that one. There's, there's been a streak down here that I think is still there. So might have to give it another coat. In case you're wondering, uh, you may have seen me putting the paint in the middle, or the varnish I should say in the middle. It's because, well, especially this one, it's so wide, by the time I got to the middle I could feel, you can feel it starting to drag because it's running out of varnish and then when it gets to the varnish it, it runs again. So I think the, uh, the best way to do it is to have you know, even maybe a couple of, you know, when you first get the varnish on your brush, it's quite a lot. And if it all just goes at the beginning, it's all just going to get lost off the edge, basically. And then not much at the end. And obviously we want it to be fairly even. So the first lot's the most. So put a dot there and even another couple and then go across. A lot of it is by feel that... As, you, as I said before, you start to feel it dragging a bit when it's running out of the varnish. And I know I said you should only do it once, but I did find that for a start, as I said before, you see a ridge. So coming back over it really, really lightly, fairly lightly, it helps to get rid of that ridge. And yeah, also as you're doing it, you do feel whether or not there's been enough varnish and if there hasn't then it's best just to go over again with a bit more varnish and times there were some times when I felt there was heaps of varnish on the brush so I would go a bit further over. One thing I did find difficult was seeing where I had last been. I think you know I heard on other people saying you need to get the lighting so that you can see where you've been but especially when it's already shiny from the previous coats I, I have been having difficulty <laughs> seeing where I'm up to uh, I think well I know at one stage I started to decide well I needed to just look at the pattern and see where I am with the pattern rather than trying to see where the glossy shine is because if I can't see that it doesn't help does it and you may have noticed, I don't know if I'll have that in the video, but at the end I went around with a brush. Okay, now before I get to that, I decided this time not to, unless I was right at that end, but not to do the edges. Because I found before, especially the edges I couldn't see, when I was dabbing them over the side there, later on when I went around and had a look, it's not very even. So... I had decided to do it while I was going along because I thought that would be a better method of incorporating the varnish from the side to the top so you don't end up with a ridge. However, yeah, I did find that I wasn't terribly happy with where I couldn't see what I was doing. So this time I thought that I would leave... I didn't want to come back and do the edges where some of it was half dry because that could go tacky and look awful. So I thought, well, I'll leave the edges for three hours, so when this is dried, then I'll come back and do the edges and do them nicely, especially if this is going to be the last coat. It's important. All right, so getting back to when I was going on with the brush, because even if, I can't remember actually whether I 
did, yeah, I think I did do the edge here because I started at that end. But even where I hadn't done the edges, there were drips of the varnish coming down. And they were dripping, they were dripping down under the canvas. So basically with that brush I was just dabbing up. I wasn't touching the side of the canvas, I was just going underneath the canvas and just basically soaking up the drips, encouraging the drips to come off. Because obviously you don't want hard lumpy bits of varnish at the end. See, so yeah, I've been doing that before too with the other coats. Uh, or even just going, for some of them I was just going with the paddle pop and scraping them off like you do with your paint, just off the bottom. One thing I did notice, which was interesting, is that sometimes I'd see some colour on it. I guess it was probably after the first coat. So it does go to show that the colour does come off in the varnish. So I guess that's a very good reason not to be going back and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, because you could, you know, the paint could be shifting underneath and you could be getting the colour going where you don't want it to be going. So yeah, just some things I discovered on this journey of varnishing. I am very glad that I've, I have chosen the Liquitex Gloss Varnish. Uh, it's, it's, it, it does look much nicer than the spray-on varnish. I have used spray-on varnish and on some smaller canvases and yeah I mean it brings it up a bit more glossy but it doesn't give this lovely sheen that this is giving it certainly is more professional if you're going to be selling I think to use this lovely gloss at least certainly on the bigger ones probably the smaller ones it doesn't matter so much look at that Gold just shimmer. Look at it glisten. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love this is the 24k gold I'm pretty sure it was and blue and I just think they look like boulders these beautiful cells that come through that's what they look like to me big boulders love them Hey guys, all right, so I'm super excited because I've now got my paintings all ready. They've been varnished, they've been hung, do we say? <laughs> they've got the hardware on for hanging and they're ready to go out to where they're going to be in this art exhibition. So these are my two paintings that I'm submitting. This is a funnel pour. Just loving it. And yeah, I've got the wire on the back. And this was a a ring pour, a double ring pour. And yeah love how that gold turned out and I, I just really am so happy with the varnish that it has brought out all the colours and yeah I'll try and show you the sorry about the lights so I just want to show you those stripes the colours in that are actually quite gorgeous and yeah 
I am super excited. This is actually the first time I've ever shown in a in an art exhibition, uh, and I'm certainly not expecting any prizes because I'm sure there'll be some even more fabulous paintings and artworks there. But hey, it's exciting to be involved in something like this. So I'm about to take them out there now. Just started bucketing down with rain, and they've got to be there. Well, I've got to leave within the next half hour. <laughs> so hopefully it's well. It takes me half an hour to get there. So. And at least I've got a carport so I can take them out to the car without getting wet. And hopefully it's not raining when I get there. <laughs> anyway, now they've been varnished, they're waterproof. So <laughs> I used the uh, Liquitex. Liquitex gloss varnish. It's one that you have to brush on. I've got videos up of that. In fact, this is probably going to be at the end of that video. <laughs> Sorry, I've just been doing so much lately. Uh, I'm, yeah, very pleased with it. I ended up doing five coats on these though, because this one ended up with just, there's just a slight mark that way and that way, just in this corner where it looked like it wasn't quite covered evenly. So I did a fifth coat crossing my fingers and yeah, it's all turned out beautifully. So, and the same on this one, there's just one slight little mark where it just wasn't as shiny. So I did a fifth coat on that one. And again, it's turned out beautifully. So super excited. It's UV resistant, waterproof. So yeah, and no, I'm not getting paid by them. Wish I was. <laughs> All right, so thanks heaps for watching and um, okay, yes, I must tell you too, I've got a Facebook group called, so I've just changed the name, it's now called Acrylic Pouring and More for All Artists at All Levels. So it's open to everyone really, even anyone who's interested in, in what we do and yeah, it's somewhere that I hope people will embrace and uh, there's I haven't got lots of petty little rules it's just be kind and 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 respectful in your comments and yeah you can share and and do what you want on it as long as it's being respectful and kind I think that's all we really need in this world anyway it would be great if we can have lots of members and have everyone helping each other. That's the aim of it all. All right. Thanks again for watching and, and catch you again soon. All right. Bye.